Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about plasma creatinine and how to use it to estimate your renal function. In the previous lecture, we understood creatinine clearance in estimating the GFR. Creatinine clearance was more accurate than spot serum creatinine. However, 24-hour urine collection, which is required for measuring creatinine clearance, is cumbersome. So, spot serum creatinine is more often used. When estimating GFR from spot plasma creatinine, you have to understand that you are making a very important assumption that you are in a steady state where the creatinine production is constant and your renal function is unchanging. If this criteria is fulfilled, the amount of creatinine excreted will equal amount of creatinine produced. As creatinine is produced by breakdown of creatine and creatine phosphate, your kidneys will lose the creatinine and your plasma creatinine will stabilize at a certain value. The amount of creatinine excretion will be equal to GFR multiplied by the concentration of creatinine in the plasma. Since creatinine production is assumed to be constant, your GFR times plasma creatinine is equal to constant. Therefore, GFR equal constant by plasma creatinine. So plasma creatinine varies inversely with the GFR. And this constant is the rate of creatinine production. And it can be different in different person depending on their muscle mass and their protein intake. So if you're a very muscular person, your creatinine production is much higher. So this constant is much higher. Your plasma creatinine will be higher to keep the GFR constant. So patients with more muscles will have higher plasma creatinine. If you have low muscle mass, your creatinine production, that is your constant, is going to be much lower. So your plasma creatinine will be lower as well. To look at it another way, your plasma creatinine is directly proportional to creatinine production and inversely proportional to GFR. That means increase in creatinine production will increase the plasma creatinine while decrease in the GFR will increase plasma creatinine. There are few concepts that you have to be familiar with to understand the creatinine level. First, fall in creatinine and GFR are proportional. It means if your creatinine doubles, your GFR is halved. For example, if your creatinine worsens from 2 to 4, the GFR will fall from 50 to 25. Second, changes in creatinine at lower level represents much larger change in GFR. That means if your creatinine increases by the same amount, the degree of GFR loss is lower at higher creatinine levels. In this case, the creatinine has increased from 1 to 2 and your GFR has fallen from 100 to 50, that is loss of 50 ml per minute of GFR. While if your creatinine increases from 3 to 4, which is the same degree of change, you only lose 8 ml per minute of GFR. The reason this is important to know is you should be more worried about rise in creatinine when creatinine levels are lower. That means rise in creatinine from 1 to 1.3 mg per dl is much worse than rise in creatinine from 4 to 4.3. Estimate of GFR from creatinine lacks the real GFR. Say for example, you had a normal renal function with GFR of 100 and you developed real failure and your real GFR is now 10 ml per minute. The corresponding plasma creatinine which will correspond to GFR of 10 will be 10 mg per dl. What will be the creatinine of this patient next day? Will it be 2 mg per dl or will it be 10 mg per dl? So thinking about it intuitively, if you don't have any kidneys, the rate of rise of plasma creatinine will depend upon the rate of production. So it will not go up from 0 to 10 in one day, but it will slowly creep up every day till it reaches your creatinine of 10, which will correspond to your GFR of 10 ml per minute. So if you look at your creatinine on day 1, 2 and 3, you are going to overestimate the GFR and wrongly dose your patient. So understand that creatinine lags behind changes in GFR if you develop renal failure Similarly, creatinine lags behind improvement in renal function as well. Let's say there was a patient who went into shock and stopped making urine. His real GFR is around 20 ml per minute. It's going to take at least 3 to 4 days for him to reach the level of creatinine which will correspond to that GFR. If you saw this patient on day 1 and 2, you would estimate his GFR to be 50 which is not correct. This knowledge becomes important in acute renal failure since you can wrongly dose your drug. Remember, you are interested in knowing the renal function and GFR, not the level of creatinine. Creatinine is just a surrogate to estimate the GFR. 
This also means that if your patient presents with creatinine of say 6 mg per DL, his renal failure didn't happen in one day, his renal function was possibly deteriorating for a week because this creatinine is just too high to reach from normal of 1 to 6 mg in one day. Of course, patient can have underlying CKD or muscle breakdown such as rhabdomyolysis which can result in a rapid rise of creatinine or the patient creatinine started pretty high. The diagnostic implication of knowing this is this information can help you ask more appropriate questions such as what happened last week rather than what happened yesterday since this trigger is likely a week old. Sometimes looking at the rate of change in creatinine may give you a better idea about changing renal function. Say for example, you have two patients. In first patient, your creatinine worsens from 1 to 2, then to 2.5, then 2.6, while in other patient, it worsens from 1 to 1.5 to 2 to 2.5. In the first case, you can see that the rate of rise in creatinine is decreasing. That means your GFR is likely improving and you will see clinical improvement in few days. In the other kidney, there is no change in worsening rate of renal function. That would mean that kidneys are not improving. Creatinine level depends upon rate of creatinine production. The couple of factors that you have to take into account is muscle mass, age, gender, amount of protein or meat ingested by the patient, and diseases such as cirrhosis. Cirrhotic patients have low muscle mass and therefore their creatinine is much lower. This also adds to the concept that rate of rise or fall in creatinine depends on the muscle mass. So for example, in our previous case, if your GFR drops pretty rapidly, a muscular patient will have much rapid rise in GFR as compared to emaciated person. Therefore, if your creatinine increases from 1 to 1.3 mg per DL in an emaciated person and a muscular person, the degree of renal function loss is much higher in the emaciated person. There are other limitations in using plasma creatinine to interpret GFR and some pitfalls. We have discussed this in our previous lecture. I would suggest that you go ahead and review that. The links are in description below. However, we will quickly review them here. The first limitation was issues with measurement of plasma creatinine using Jaffe's reaction where non-creatinine chromosomes interfere with the measurements of serum creatinine. So it can be relatively high with higher levels of substances like bilirubin, estoestate, glucose, etc. Enzymatic methods are better though still have problems when you're using catecholamines such as dopamine and dobutamine, which will falsely lower the serum creatinine measurements. So there can be bias up to 0.2 mg per DL levels in measurement of creatinine depending on method used in your lab. So when you see a creatinine value, say for example 1.5 mg per DL, you are really looking at a range between 1.3 to 1.7. The tubular secretion is increased as your GFR falls and this happens because of increased secretion in your oat transporters and these transporters are upregulated in renal failure. So at GFR of 40 to 80 ml per minute, the creatinine secretion is much higher so your creatinine levels are falsely reduced. There can be also false elevation if creatinine secretion in the PCT is inhibited by drugs such as trimethoprim, cimetidine, etc. Increased catabolism as seen in patients with fever, sepsis, steroid use, seizures, malignant hypothermia or loss of muscles such as seen in rhabdomyolysis can falsely elevate serum creatinine. Dilution of creatinine by IV fluid and volume resuscitation can also confound identification of renal failure in hospitals. Know the reasons for false elevation of serum creatinine. You can have increased production such as seen in rhabdomyolysis, myositis and patients with increased catabolism. You can have interference with Jaffe's reaction assay, especially high levels of ketones, glucose, bilirubin, etc. Or you can have decreased secretion in the PCT by inhibition of oat transporter seen in trimethoprim, cimetidine, etc. In hospitalized patient, pay attention to fluid resuscitation and IV fluid as these can dilute creatinine levels. As you can see, the commonest source of error in estimating GFR is your muscle mass which depends upon age and your gender. So there is a way of adjusting for this. Cockroft called formula was developed in 1976 which uses age, lean body weight and gender to adjust for estimating the GFR levels. However, this equation significantly overestimates GFR by 10 to 40%. So let's see how this formula can help you. 
Say, for example, you have two patients with creatinine of 1. It would appear that creatinine is normal in both patients, but if you use this formula, you can see that the GFR in the first patient is 114, which is normal, while the other patient has a GFR of only 28. And this is important to know because you can dose your drugs properly when you use estimated GFR rather than just by looking at creatinine. There are better formulas such as this MDRD equation developed in 2005, which is more generalizable as it adjusts for age, gender, and race. However, it significantly underestimates GFR when compared to your real GFR. Another equation is your CKD epi equation, which is more complicated and adjusts for age and gender. How do these three equations compare with each other? Say you have a patient of 80 year old female and weighs 140 pounds. You can already see that the EGFR estimate by Cockcroft Gold is much higher than MDRD or CKD equation. So which one of these equations should you use? As per your National Kidney Foundation, your CKD epi creatinine equation or your MDRD equation are possibly better than when compared to Cockcroft Gold formula. Now you know both methods to estimate GFR from creatinine, which one should you use? It depends upon how accurate you want to be and how much time do you have to know your GFR. Creatinine clearance is much more accurate clinical tool to estimate GFR. However, its 24-hour urine collection is cumbersome, so it's not very commonly used. Spot serum creatinine is more commonly used tool because it is more rapid. However, understand that this is less accurate than creatinine clearance. The limitation of both the methods include that they are not really good in detecting early renal failure. There are limitations to plasma creatinine measurements as we talked about. Spot serum creatinine also depends upon age, gender, muscle mass and protein intake which is not a limitation for your creatinine clearance. In patients whose GFR is rapidly changing, creatinine clearance is better than spot serum creatinine. However, both are not very accurate. You can see in this graph that creatinine clearance and spot serum creatinine estimation of GFR are not correlated very well. Their R square is 0.37. So in stable GFR, you can use spot creatinine and calculate your eGFR for practical purposes. But if you need more accurate information about GFR, go ahead and order creatinine clearance from a 24-hour urine collection. In situation with rapidly changing GFR, both the method falls short. In these cases, you have to look at both creatinine and urine output to estimate the renal function. And you have to use either a rifle criteria or Aiken criteria. And you can see that they take both change in creatinine and amount of urine output to identify risk, injury, and failure. In practical sense, when you're dealing with acute renal failure, you're not interested in knowing the creatinine because it's already a moving target. What you're more interested in knowing is is my renal function improving or getting worse? And what is my approximate GFR so that I can dose my medications properly? So for this, make sure that you monitor the urine output, look at your eGFR and pay attention to rate of rise in creatinine. This might help you get the information that you need clinically. In summary, creatinine is surrogate of GFR. A simple way to know GFR is dividing 100 by plasma creatinine. However, I would rather suggest that you use estimated GFR using MDRD or CKD epi equation as it adjusts for age, gender and muscle mass. And most of the labs will give you this number along with the serum creatinine. Understand limitation of GFR estimation from plasma creatinine. These are not accurate in changing states, especially in ICU, where creatinine change lags a few days behind the renal failure. Other reasons for false elevation of creatinine include increased production, interference with assays, interference with secretion of creatinine. Changes in serum creatinine result in large GFR changes when creatinine is low. Use 24-hour urine collection if you really want to know more accurate GFR. And if you are dealing with rapidly changing GFR, use your rifle or Aiken criteria. So next time you see an increase in creatinine, say for example 1 mg to 2 mg per DL in ICU, I want you to know a few things. First, Know that the eGFR reported on the lab is not real GFR. This eGFR is possibly overestimating the real GFR. So look at the urine output and use rifle or Aiken criteria to catch those at risk of renal injury. Understand that it's going to take a few days for creatinine to equilibrate to a final level. Since this is not going to happen in a few days, you don't want to wait that long to help your patient. So follow step two to catch the renal failure early.
You'll be a rock star if you monitored urine output in a sicker patient so you can catch those at risk of renal failure. This will help you take steps to prevent further injury and renal failure. These are the references. Thank you.